Great. Good morning, everyone. Um, we are now going to start and prepare for our keynote this morning. I'm very excited to be able to introduce our keynote. Uh, my name is Anita Manuel, and I'm the Associate Director for Career Education here on campus at San Jose State University. Um, and it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for our conference today, Itza Sanchez. Uh, Itza is a program manager at eBay with focused programs, learning and development, and process operations in the core product and core technology organization. She's a global president for Unidos, one of eBay's many communities of inclusion, whose mission is focused on the experience of Hispanic, Latinx eBay employees. Itza is also a proud alumna and former employee of San Jose State University, so she knows us well. She earned her both her bachelor's and master's degrees here at San Jose State, cultural anthropology and interdisciplinary studies with an emphasis in cultural leadership. And she also worked in enrollment services. She served as a leader across campus by lecturing in various colleges, also served on the Academic Senate Student Fairness Committee, uh, the President's Commission on Diversity and co-led the task force for the Chicanx Latinx Student Success um, Initiative, whose program, uh, programmatic work served as the foundation for El Centro, which we have as a center today. As a result of her leadership and dedication to diversity and inclusion, Itza was awarded the Arthur Dunklin Diversity Champion Award in 2017. And when she happens to have some free time, she also serves the community as an active board member um, for the School of Arts and Culture at the Heritage Mexican Plaza, as well as Rospanica Silicon Valley. So please join me with a warm welcome for Itza. Thank you so much, everyone, for being patient. It is what it means to lead in a virtual world is just being agile and, and going with the flow. Sometimes it doesn't go as planned, but that's okay. We rebound and we pick right back up to where we needed to get to. So thank you again um, for everyone for the invitation, for the well, warm welcome, and of course the patience in getting uh, set up here. Um, Ita Sanchez, I'm a program manager from eBay. It is always um, uh, wonderful to get back on campus. Um, and actually, let me do one better. And let me join you on campus here. So there we go. Now we're ready to go. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is talk about uh, leadership in a virtual world. I'll do a quick introduction, the impacts of that virtual world on all of us, best practices in leading in a virtual world, specifically as where you're coming into, finishing your college education, and stepping into the professional environment, and most importantly, how to manage change, because that's really what we're talking about. Um, I don't know if we'll have time for some Q&A. I know that I'm on a... Um, I'm on a, on a time limit here, so I'll, I'll go as quickly as possible. First of all, on the introduction that you, uh, that you heard, uh, Ito Santos, I'm a program manager at product strategy and operations for eBay. I lead their onboarding for all technical new hires in the America's market, um, and I run a program specifically for recent college graduates, that's RCGs, so uh, helping individuals transition from student to professional. Um, I'm also the global president for Unidos, our community of inclusion for Hispanic and Latinx employees. Um, and that tells you what I do, but it doesn't actually tell you who I am. I am the daughter and the granddaughter of Mexican immigrants. I am first generation on my mom's side and second generation on my dad's side. Um, my grandfather actually worked the fields in California and my grandfather uh, was a truck driver. I am born in the U.S., but I have very, very strong cultural roots and ties to my Mexican heritage. Um, from a young age, I was a Mexican folk dancer. I have over 30 years of experience in that world. Uh, lived in Mexico City for a time, studied it extensively, uh, was one of the founding members and artistic director for Grupo Folclorico Luna y Sol there at San Jose State. Um, I earned two uh, degrees while I was on campus, um, and I worked there full time for, for quite a long time. Um, uh, and it was foundational in terms of my success uh, professionally. I had the privilege of working in student success so with so many individuals on campus leading efforts um, that would then uh, create the foundation for what is now El Centro, um, or your Student Success Center for Chicanx and Latinx students, which led to the opportunity at eBay. So um, Accelerator is the program that I created for core product and technologies, recent college graduates. Um, 
um, employees uh, who are just starting their careers at eBay and the technical space. Um, and then that's a photo of me from last year um, doing our uh, Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. And so I'll, I'll take a pause and and also, you know, shout out to um, those of us that are recognizing and celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. I, I wore my um, RGB uh, inspired uh, collar here today, uh, you know, to acknowledge the wonderful work of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, but, you know, I think too, the question is, why am I sharing so much in such detail of my background? Like, so what? We're here to talk about, um, you know, virtual leadership. Um, and the reason that I share my background with you is that my background is my superpower, right? My background and who I am, my cultural upbringing, the roots that I have and, and the experiences that I came from, um, the, the um, professional development that I experienced while I was working at San Jose State, uh, the interactions that I had with so many colleagues from across campus and the professors were fundamental to my success um, and, and my ability to um, be proactive and engage and, and be agile in, in this ever, ever changing and unprecedented world that we live in. And I know that my background is so similar to so many of you as students. Um, you know, San Jose State uh, has over 50% of its students are, are first in their family to go to, to go to college. You know, that creates a, a university of, of a student perspective and experience that is absolutely unique. And so every single one of you on the call has your, your unique experience and, and life um, sort of journey that is propelling you to a moment to be successful in this unprecedented time. So we're going to go into it in a minute. So we talk about virtual leadership, but what are we really, really talking about? What we're talking about is facilitating and being okay with this forced change that has happened to us. It's been forced. Not only is it forced on us, it is absolutely abrupt and uncomfortable. So many of us, our plans have been derailed, postponed, canceled. I can't tell you how many things that have happened just in my own personal life, things that I thought I was going to do or accomplish that just aren't going to happen anymore. Um, so what I want to do is sometimes that process can be extremely frustrating and painful. In the chat right now, um, I'd love to, for you to share what are some of the things that have that you have been impacted by that have either been derailed, postponed, canceled, you're pissed off about it, you're frustrated about, go ahead and throw it in the chat. And I'll share, you know, I was supposed to go to two um, uh, weddings, international weddings, one in Mexico, one in Canada over the course of the summer. Obviously, those didn't happen. Um, and while I'm frustrated about that, I can only imagine the impact for, you know, the bride and groom to be, you know, who had to make all these adjustments in, ter in terms of their life event plan um, in terms of that happening. And I, and I invite you to share this in the chat as a mechanism for you to get rid of it, right? This, this frustration feeling of, what you feel has been derailed or postponed or just been impacting you in a negative way. So get rid of it, get rid of that negative thought, throw it in the chat and throw it away. Um, and again, there's real health impacts happening, right? This is a pandemic. This isn't, you know, us deciding one day that we're gonna, um, you know, work and, and go to school in our pajamas um, for, for nine months and beyond. Uh, there's economic, very real economic impacts. And of course, there's Zoom fatigue. I'm getting more accomplished now than I have ever before, but it's exhausting. And I haven't moved anywhere. I'm, I'm in my couch one day. I'm on the, on the, um, uh, in my kitchen another day. Uh, and it's exhausting, even though I haven't moved or gone anywhere. And I think a lot of the question, too, is how will I and then you fill in the blank for whatever this means to me, to me, right? How will I find a job? How will I network effectively? How am I going to maximize the impact of my education in the last year, two years, or however long you still have at San Jose State? A lot of unknowns and a lot of questions. And what I want to say is a lot of it has to do with starting with a particular mindset. Mindset is everything to how you approach your next step as we go into this virtual um, world, right? And I do know that, you know, the CSU Chancellor has made the announcement that into the spring that we're continuing to virtual um, um, uh, academically. The same thing is happening on the professional side. I went home on a Friday in March and I haven't been back into the office since. Um, we aren't going back until um, our, our extension has been to the end of the year, but I suspect any day now we'll get notification that it'll be extended well into 2021. So understand that you're not the only one being impacted, everybody is being impacted. Um, and so getting our mindset um, about how to best prepare and get us 
get our feet moving in the right direction in a positive way during this time is absolutely going to be critical. What I also want to really stress is, number one, that no matter what accomplishments you achieve, somebody helps you. And so even though you feel like you're all alone in front of your computer and your Zoom, um, that um, you're not alone. There is a huge campus of professional individuals at San Jose State that are ready to support you. And yes, it does not feel or look the same because you can't just walk onto campus and walk into an office and get assistance. But it doesn't mean that the offices and the support services and the workshops and all of the, 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 the work that so many um, faculty and staff across campus, um, that they're not doing it, right? And that it's not available to you. But now it just takes a little bit more legwork and ingenuity on the student's perspective, right? To get in there, to make sure that one, you show up to opportunities when they are available. And when you do show up, um, that you maximize the, the opportunity once you're there. So those of you that are engaging in the chat, that's an excellent example of it. But what I really want to stress with this is you're not going to do this alone. You're not going to finish college alone. You're not going to get your first job alone. When you get that and you land that first job, um, you know, your transition in your first year of hire, your success there isn't going to happen in a silo. It's not going to be by yourself. You're going to get help. And so please, 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 please now utilize those services, get all of the help that you need um, to maximize your success and impact today, setting yourself up for your tomorrow. Okay. What I also want to stress as we're thinking about leadership in a virtual world is change is constant. The most successful individuals are the ones that can manage change effectively and efficiently. Does it suck sometimes? Absolutely. Does it derail plans? Absolutely. But if you can get yourself wrapped around the notion that change will happen, anticipate that it will happen, acknowledge when it impacts you, act as you need to act to move forward, and then understand that this is gonna repeat. So this, there's actually a change uh, cycle that I wanna walk through with you. Um, and, and, and you know, think about how it's impacting you either professionally, academically, um, but again, this idea of change is, is gonna happen. Some, something, positive or negative, I win the lottery, uh, I lose my job, there's a global pandemic, right? Something is gonna happen. Because of that thing happening, another part of my life will end because of that thing. Then I'm going to hit into a neutral zone. And then finally, I'll hit into this idea of new beginnings and I'll hit my stride. And then I'll be in this new beginnings phase and it's great, but then another change will happen. So being comfortable with that cycle is going to be critical. So let's just kind of walk through it. So this is um, a snapshot of what happens in the beginning. So in the beginning, the old situation is ending and the sense of loss and what is associated with it is most strong. You're going to feel sadness, anger, denial, excitement, anxiety, resentment, and fear. For sure, this was happening particularly in the, in the beginning when we were, uh, weren't sure what was going on. We were home. Am I going to finish the semester at home? Am I, am I ever going to go back? What's going to happen? Your peers are going to say these things. Um, this is the wrong way to go about it. It makes no sense. I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, it won't be a big deal. Or I've lost all control of my life. I don't know what's happening. Uh, the world is ending, right? Uh, we, I think we've all been at this stage. Um, you know, and again, shout out in the chat if you have experienced or heard folks in your peer group talk about it in these ways. So the challenge then is to ask, how can I then support the change? This is done to us not by choice, but we do have a choice on how we act and react to it. How can I keep from doing things the old way? We're not going to be doing things the old way. Getting very comfortable with Zoom and being able to be agile in the way that we just did when we were having some issues with the with the um, um, with the audio. Uh, you know, the, these things and, and being adapting adapted is is one of the most important. We hit into the next phase of this. Um, is you experience uh, is the experience of confusion of in between time. This is like the limbo place, right? Like it's not how it used to be. And it's not where it will be, but it's in the, in the middle somewhere um, where the old ways doesn't exist and the new way is not yet comfortable, right? We're not yet fully comfortable, full instruction on Zoom quite yet. And it's not just you as a student. I'm sure the faculty and the staff are also going through their own learning curve as well, right? You're going to feel disoriented, impatient, hopeful, 
this connected, apathetic, and very cautious through this. Your peers are going to say, yes, but I don't know what I'm doing. I just don't care. I feel very, very disconnected. If this is where you're at, throw it up in the chat. So the challenge is then stay focused and take action, right? Stay focused and take action so that you can get out of this gray zone and into the last phase of change. What is it? If you experience of a new way or situation finally starts to feel comfortable and routine, right? You, set, you are now taking charge of the situation rather than allowing the situation to dictate how you feel and how you act. You're going to feel once you get to this stage satisfied, energized, a little more confident in how you approach things, eager, clear, you're settled, and you're committed now to maybe new goals and a new journey and a new path. Your peers are going to say, what if we do this? What if we do that? I feel like myself again. I can see some ways to make this new thing work, right? One of the positive things about this is it's a lot easier for me to come back to campus, honestly. Um, even though uh, the eBay campus is only, you know, in, in, in Campbell, um, right there off Bascom and 17, the process to drive across town, find a parking spot, get to your location, speak to you and then go back to work takes far more time than if I just popped into a Zoom as, a, as an example of, of a positive impact, right? Um, it's not so bad once you get used to it. And so now I consider moving confidently and purpose, purposefully forward with these new plans and a new direction and creating normalcy within this new situation. And so we can continue to complain about it or be frustrated, right? And those feelings are absolutely valid. If that's the phase and the stage of change that you're at, understand that it's just part of it, right? And you will eventually get to this next piece as you, as you um, process that change. But getting and understanding the change process and being comfortable with that cycle, anticipating it that it's natural, will also help you and elevate you um, because change is constant. Activating a growth mindset is absolutely critical. Um, the top little statement there says failure is an opportunity to grow. Failure is defined by so many things. I didn't get the job. I didn't get the grade that I wanted. I was supposed to graduate in, you know, four years. I'm graduating in five, I'm graduating in five and a half. Th those are all perceived failures. And a growth mindset tells you it's just a different path. There is no right or wrong path. It is your path and your individual journey. And regardless of which path you take and how you approach it, you'll get there. You just need to make sure that you stay on this growth mindset, that the challenges will help you to grow, that your effort and your attitude will also help to um, determine your ability. So here's what I wanna do, because I think the biggest thing is, how am I gonna network? How am I gonna get my job? I'm so worried. I feel like I'm behind, right? You're not behind anything. And, and what I really want to stress is there was this, um, this, this data point here, which I think is very, very powerful, which I'm really happy to share with you. Um, this is data that came from an Institute for the Future, a study from Dell in 2017. And I want you right now in the chat um, to tell me of all of the jobs that will exist in 2030, so all of the jobs that will exist in 2030, that's just 10 years from now, what percentage of those jobs have not been invented yet. Go ahead and give me your thoughts on what that percentage is in the chat. What percentage of jobs have not been invented yet? 50%, okay, thank you for the, for the 10%, okay, 30%, okay, we're getting there, 25%, 40%, very good. Okay, so we got some thoughts coming in. Here's what I'll share with you. 85% of jobs in 10 years have not even existed yet. Exactly, wow, right? And so the reason that I share this with you, because so many of you I know are, are in the position right now where you're um, uncertain and, and you're frustrated, how am I ever gonna find the job? What job? It doesn't even exist yet. You make your own path, right? And this is um, the perfect example of of how you you can you can do that and that your your future even in the next 10 years hasn't even been written yet right so there's no there's no way there's no reason to feel like 
failure or perception of failure when you have so many possible opportunities and, and ways that you can go. You just continue to develop your, your, your today um, and let tomorrow come as it needs to. So I'm not going to share this video, but what I will do, um, uh, just for the sake of time, because I know we lost some time um, with the technical issue, but there's this bit.ly. I'll ask my um, colleagues, uh, my former colleagues from San Jose State, if they could just throw this bit.ly into the chat um, so that you can watch it on your own time. It's a TED Talk related to grit, right? And so um, it's six minutes long. I encourage you to watch it. Um, and the, the premise here is that the most successful students, um, you know, the criteria of success wasn't necessarily grades or intelligence. It was grit. And grit is defined as your ability to be resilient. Resiliency is directly related to how you can activate yourself in the face of change and challenge, right? So going back to that challenge and that mindset and that positive growth mindset then becomes so critical to you um, in, in defining grit. And I know San Jose State students are absolutely gritty. It's sometimes we forget how gritty we are. So, um, you know, I, I share this with you to empower you um, and to remind you the resources um, and, and the individual uh, skills that you already possess that are going to put you on the path of, you know, the 85% the of jobs that haven't even been created yet. So, my again, my challenge to you is then to active, activate and unleash yourself, right? If you aren't um, connected uh, closely with the Career Center and all of the resources and workshops that they offer virtually, do it, right? If you're not engaged with your um, academic or um, uh, culturally based resource centers, Go do it. If you need help, remember everybody needs help. Um, contact SJSU Cares um, for all of the programs and resources and support that they have available to you. Um, Academic-based programs like goals that are specific by discipline continue to do work. Um, so please, please, please make sure that you use those resources. And again, remember where you are and who you are. You are San Jose State students. Um, just a snapshot, so this is like the high level, right? Like at SJSU, you want to make sure that you maximize your existing campus um, resources and maximize your learning in the classroom, right? Are you just logging into Zoom, turning your camera off, and 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 just you know being a being a shadow and a space in the, in, in the Zoom room, or um, are you um, actively engaging in the chat? Are you um, actively taking screenshots as you need it to make sure that you you get the content, right? Like the experience um, interface will be different, right? But how you react to it and act in accordance will also um, be telling in terms of your success. Let's talk about socials, right? That's all we can do now, social media. Spend more time on LinkedIn, less time on TikTok, right? Build your profile and your professional brand as much as you can. And even if you're thinking, Itza, I'm not working right now though, I'm a student. It's fine. Your job is a student. You are all full-time or part-time students. That's your job. It's, and there are ways that you can link the two on LinkedIn. Let me give you an example. You're in a class, let's say I'm in a business finance, and you're listening to a lecture on topic XYZ. On your LinkedIn, just indicate, had a really great, really great lecture today on this topic. I'm really excited to use this new skill in a future job. You just directly connected your experience and your learning to your future job that you haven't received or haven't gotten yet, but it's setting you up and you're creating a brand for yourself as one that is um, that has the expertise to be successful in whatever field you choose, right? So that's just an example of how you can do it. Networks. Join professional networks, right? There, of course, there are opportunities on campus, but um, for example, if you are um, uh, in HR or if you're in engineering or whatever it is that you, um, your, your, your sort of professional path is and discipline, join the professional networks related to those organizations. So SHRM um, uh, is, an, is an example of one. Um, the engineering professional, network for professional engineers is another one. Um, join the alumni network. But Issa, I'm not an alumni yet. It doesn't matter. They're not going to kick you out. They want you in there as students anyway. And what's best, the, the best thing about it is alumni networks are, are filled uh, with alumni and they're professionals. So it's just a matter in, in those networking events and the, the opportunity to introduce yourself to say, I'm a current student at San Jose State. I'm majoring in social science 
and um, I'll graduate in, you know, spring or whenever, and I'm looking actively now for my first job. If you have any um, recent college graduate jobs available or internships available, please let me know. I'm, I'm interested in talking to you. And that's how it starts. And you follow up on LinkedIn and you just work it. You've got, it you have to be more active and, and engaged with it. And again, lastly, your mindset matters. Taking care of yourself first. Remember that change is constant. Remember that some of those feelings of anger and disappointment are natural and normal. Get the assistance that you need to get through it and put your best foot forward and be action-oriented and action-based and maintain that growth mindset. Your path, remember, is not written. There is no failure because you haven't embarked on it yet, right? So it's just shifting and changing. And so embracing that change really truly is gonna be critical when we're talking about leading in a virtual environment, in a virtual world. I wanna close just to remind you um, that you, you are resilient. You have the necessary skill set to be successful in this ever-changing virtual world. Um, that you are awesome because of the individual background that you possess and you bringing to campus. And honestly, because you are Spartans, all of this, right? And why do I even close with this idea of like having pride in your school? Um, I, I'm, I'm a fundamental believer that um, the, you know, the engaged student is the successful student. The engaged employee is the successful employee. Um, having pride in where you came from and your school is um, paramount because if you, if you don't have confidence in where you earned your degree, if you don't have confidence to say that your diploma from San Jose State is important and matters, you will never be able to, to communicate how important you are and what, how important your expertise is to an employer if you don't yourself believe and have pride in, to, in terms of where you came from and, 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 and where you earned your degree. So again, utilize the expertise and the support from your professors. Utilize all the resources available to you um, from all, so many support organizations across campus um, and be you. And so of course, I will uh, end by saying that eBay right now has internship opportunities available for next summer. The internship cycle for many top corporations is fall in preparation for summer. So please, please, please apply now. Apply to anything and everything. You will get 50 no's for one yes. So don't get discouraged, just keep at it. Um, for recent college graduates, we also do have specific um, opportunities for those who are just starting their career. So please um, apply if you think that there's something there that's of interest to you. I am available on LinkedIn. Don't just send me a contact request because I'll deny it. But if you send me a message to say, I heard you speak, I was interested in learning more about this, let's do a virtual coffee, I'm all about it, right? And then let's make a real connection. And that's what it's about, is maintaining real connection. So with that, I'm going to pass it on because I know that um, I, don't, I want to make sure that they get back on track in terms of time. I don't know if we have time for questions um, or whatnot, but so thank you again for, a for having me. Class for all of us. Thank you so much, Itza. That was wonderful. And I'm so impressed with how you were agile in the situation and still managed to get all of your slides and talking points in at, within good time. Um, I, I know, I'm seeing that there's some messages that are coming in. So maybe we can take maybe just a minute uh, if there's some questions specifically for Itza since we got a late start. And for our employer panel, I know we were supposed to start at 1015, but due to some technical difficulties, hoping we can maybe push back just two or three more minutes before we start that panel. So let me just go through here, the chat down here. Just a lot of love for Itza. Thank you so much, Itza. Thank you so much. Amazing, I loved it. Um, and please do take advantage of the generous offer that Itza made if you wanna connect with her and, and take the good advice of not just sending a connection and LinkedIn without context as to how you heard about her or why you wanna connect with her. So referencing that you heard her as the keynote speaker and what was, um, you know, um, inspiring to you would help kind of with that introduction note on LinkedIn. So thank you so much, Itza, for your time. You're welcome to hang out <laughs> if, you, if you have time to hear um, some of our other uh, insights from our speakers. And for the internships, 
Um, I know that a lot of students are actively looking right now. There are, um, beyond just going to, is it the careers page or how can they best? Yeah, just, there, just go to the careers page and there's actually, so we have a very specific um, uh, university programs recruiting page. And so just click, I'm looking specifically for an internship or I'm looking specifically for, we call them recent college graduate um, um, positions because those are tailored specifically to the emerging, the, the emerging professional, right? Like you're going to come out of San Jose State with the, with the academic know-how, but it's understood that you're not going to know really anything in terms of <laughs> the professional world, right? Um, what I will also say is that our conversion rate, and this is just between you and me in the Zoom room, our conversion rate from intern to um, professional hire is extremely high. So, you know, companies are always wanting to find, you know, top talent in their intern pipeline to convert them because that's, a, that's essentially an ability to test drive you as an employee, but also for you as an employee to test drive the company to see if it's the right fit, right? So I encourage you to, to apply, 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 um, to any and all internships available. And the application period is now. Do not wait. If you wait till November, it will close on you. Okay, wise words. Take action. Thank you so much again. And we will now take a short break to uh, transition to our employer panel.